Hey guys, Andy here, and today on this raw edition of Andy Talks Japan, I'm going to be answering the question for you what makes a good Japan video? So I decided to do this one raw because、um, I'm going to be very busy this week moving myself out to Japan. Here is the status update of that so far. I got my sea bag pretty much full of my clothes, and I still have plenty of room left over for my other things. And then all that huge pile of clothes right there, I'm going to donate. And I still got to go through that bin right there. Not much left in it. And then that bin right there, I'm going to donate pretty much all that. So not a whole lot left, but still got to get it done. And I'm going to be super busy these next few days getting all that stuff sorted. So someone's going to have a very good Christmas this year. So regardless, but、uh, yeah. So basically, I'm just not going to have any time to edit any videos until I get myself out to Japan. But I definitely want to make some Andy Talks Japan episodes. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. So, yeah. So this video is in response to the Red Value, who I've been watching his videos for a while. And I've been corresponding with him in、uh, the TQSM Discord as well.、Uh, we've just been. Talking about different things like different、uh, thumbnail ideas, as well as the,、uh, the idea about what actually makes a good Japan video. So, figured we'd answer that today. <laughs> But it is going to be in raw format, so apologies for the ums, the ahs, you know, you knows, and all the awkward pauses and all that kind of stuff. Plus, it's kind of late, so I'm not going to raise my voice because I don't want to you know, wake people up. <laughs> so, just have the deal. But in any event,、um, I've been watching the Japan vlogging scene, the J vlogging scene, pretty much since its inception back in the Halcyon days of Tokyo Kuni and the late great Roger Swan and so many others that have come and sadly gone since those days. And there's a couple that are still around. But、uh, yeah, nowadays you have a whole group of、uh, way different vloggers than you did. Back in the day, and the overall styling has changed, not just for J vlogging, but just for YouTubers in general.、Um, before, it was just kind of seen as a novelty to make videos online and on YouTube in general.、Uh, but now、uh, it's very commonplace, and people even make videos you know, for the sole purpose of making money. <clears throat> And that was definitely not a thing back in the day. A lot of people saw you as a sellout if you had ads on your video or you did sponsorships and stuff like that. And there's still little crops of them here and there. But、uh, for the most part, people are pretty respectful of、uh, you know, putting ads on the videos and sponsorship plugs and all this kinds of stuff. And it's certainly a far cry from uh, the, uh, the good old days, quote unquote. But.、Uh, As far as、uh, what makes a good Japan video goes,、um, at its core, a Japan video is basically a travel video, right? So, a travel video usually caters to、um, a foreign audience, so that they don't care, cater to the domestic audience that the,、uh, the video is、uh, based in. So, in this case, with it being in Japan, Uh, they're not exactly catering to a Japanese audience, right?、Uh, there has been some crossover with some people, but for the most part, they cater towards a Western audience,、uh, namely Americans, Canadians, English people, Australians, all them peeps. So, <laughs> like I said, there has been some crossover、uh, into the Japanese audience, but Let's face it, that's mostly just、uh, a lot of the cute girl vloggers and、uh, a lot of、uh, dirty old oyaji out there just looking at the kawaii, kaikoku jin, desu yo, ne? So, yeah, they're not really there for the, the, the cool B roll shots and the dubstep editing and all that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. But,、uh, yeah, so.、Um, What I think makes a good、uh, Japan video has to do with balance and balancing 
um, several different key components. One of them is the uh, connection that you have with your audience. Um, you know, one of the examples he gave was uh, Victor, give me a break, man. And, uh, you know, just the fact that he puts out these laundry videos and even still he's, you know, engaging. But, uh, you know, he also puts out some edited stuff and it's still engaging. So um, that was the example that um, Red Value gave anyway. And, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, being an engaging person, having a connection with your audience. So you can put out raw videos like this one, and hopefully people are still watching. Maybe. I don't know. We'll check the, uh, the audience retention. But regardless, um, you got to have that connection with your audience because otherwise, who's going to watch your videos, right? But at the same time, if you just prattle on and on, you know, eventually they're going to be like, all right, I get it, I get it, you know. And they'll be like, all right, just get to the point already. Come on, tell me the thing. <laughs> so that's where the other point comes in, which is editing. So that's where a lot of uh, the real creative types get hung up on because they think that, oh, this video only did so well because the video is like highly edited and lots of cool b-roll shots and you know cool camera cuts and drone footage and time lapse and all this other stuff but uh, really that's just you know frills <laughs> it's frills on the packaging but it's not the reason people come and tune in like i doubt the reason that someone like casey neistat or abroad in japan you know got as big as they did was because, oh, he shoots really cool B-roll and has all these cool slidey shots and all that kind of stuff. It certainly helps, you know, set a pace, but, you know, he could have done without a lot of those. But <clears throat> the point being, though, is that there is a usage for that editing, and that is to ultimately tell a story. Now, whatever that story is just depends on what the video is talking about, like, you know, going to a certain part of Japan, uh, trying a certain type of food, meeting a person, whatever the case may be. And if you can tell that story with editing and have a connection with your audience, then you'll be able to make some great Japan videos or just Great videos in general. You don't even have to narrow it down to just Japan videos. So ultimately, the main two things you got to worry about is having a connection with your audience and having, I wouldn't say like good production quality, but just having editing that allows you to tell a story. So just being able to tell a story. There you go. <laughs> Raw, baby. But yeah, um, I could say more. But uh, I don't want to bore you guys even more than I already have. So we'll end things here. And I'll be sure to, uh, you know, discuss these things more and more in the comments as well. So if you guys have any other uh, questions or thoughts or whatever, be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the booty boops. And with that said, guys, this is Dandy San. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And we're just going to keep waving till the end card's over. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I can't believe it's going to be a couple more days until I'm back in Tokyo making Andy Japandi again. <laughs> All right. Bye.